Brilliant. Well, thank you very much indeed for coming. For those of you that don't know, I'm Jimmy Carr, one of the biggest faces in British comedy. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I've got one of the biggest faces. Look at that, it's like the moon. <laughs> Probably affecting your menstrual cycle, just being this close. <laughs> when I told my mum I wanted to grow up and be a comedian, she said, you can't do both. <laughs> and she's right, being a comedian makes you quite immature. I'm sort of like a 14-year-old boy trapped inside a man's body. Not in a Michael Jackson way. <laughs> because he's a child at heart, not because he fucks kids. Because <laughs> he definitely doesn't, for legal reasons, so... I should warn you, this isn't a show for the easily offended. It's not even a show for people that are quite difficult to offend. Essentially, this is a show for people without a moral compass. <laughs> and that's why it's nice we've got a couple of chavs down the front. Hello. <laughs> Some guy, I did a gig in Hull recently. I went out to get a coffee before the gig. Someone came up to me and went, are you Jimmy Carr? I went, yeah. They went, are you in Hull? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am, you retard. I had this amazing cab driver. He was driving a black cab. He was whistling, yeah, smiling, clearly having a brilliant time. He said, I love my job, I'm my own boss, nobody tells me what to do. I said, left here. <laughs> Are you all right in the back? <laughs> Excellent. It's nice to hear that, because often when I go to comedy shows, and I go to them all the time, I love coming out to see live comedy, the thing is, though, if I'm sat right at the back, I'm a little bit disappointed. I always get my ticket and go, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm fucking miles away. <laughs> but there are, of course, advantages to being right at the back. You get more of a sense of theatre, of people coming together and sharing a sense of humour. What a wonderful thing that is, the great British musical spirit. And also, if you're right at the back, this sort of thing won't happen. I fucked your mum. <laughs> That's not going to happen to any of you. I've got nothing but respect for your mums. They're hard-working, decent women. Your mum still owes me a tenner. <laughs> I'm joking. I owe her a tenner. <laughs> Bluff. I'm your real dad. <laughs> Kidding, no-one knows who your real dad is. <laughs> that isn't your mum there, is it? <laughs> Sorry. This is a bit awkward. Uh, <laughs> hello, sir. <laughs> She's brilliant in bed, isn't she? <laughs> uh, what, what, sorry? I don't remember her. What, that's the thing that annoys you? <laughs> Not the fact that I fucked your mum, the fact... <laughs> you don't even remember fucking my mum. <laughs> Well, thankfully, you all seem to be laughing. You all seem to have taken that quite well. What's Would your you, name, sir? Uh, Julio. <laughs> <laughs> Julio? Yeah. How, how did you know you were having a gay? <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking as, as, as you gave birth? You think, oh, I hope he's a little bender. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll call him Julio. Is that your girlfriend, or beard, as I like to call her? <laughs> well done. It's almost like you're protesting too much. <laughs> Sorry, you're clearly getting a bit of a hard time. But, you know, you can't, you're smiling through it, because at a comedy gig, you're expecting people to be a bit, you know, there's a little bit of banter. You maybe weren't expecting that. <laughs> but you're expecting a bit of banter. The problem comes when you do this for six or seven days in a row, and then you find yourself back in the real world doing something a bit mundane on a Monday morning. I don't know, maybe buying stamps at the post office. And there's a bit of cheeky banter between you and the lady behind the plexiglass. <laughs> Saw you on TV on Friday night. D d did you? What do you think? Well, you clearly no match for Jonathan Ross. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because I fucked your mum. <laughs> Don't cry, I'll go. <laughs> I saw a proper scientific survey. It said that women can tell if a man wants a baby just by looking at the shape of his face. Presumably, if it's like this... <laughs> that means he doesn't want a baby. And if it's like this... <laughs> it means the conception will involve a turkey baster. <laughs> well, that, that was my gay face. Was that not clear enough? 
fine, have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'd like to apologise for that mime. I, I neglected the balls. <laughs> I saw a thing in the paper about animal rights protesters being up in arms because guinea pigs were being used in testing. I thought well, the clue there is in the name. <laughs> <laughs> they're not calling them guinea pigs for nothing. That's what they're for. <laughs> I was in the cinema last week with a friend. He turned to me. He said, I'm just going to the gents. Do you want anything? <laughs> I said, yeah, bring us back some piss. Thanks very much. Maybe one of those little minty things from a urinal. <laughs> you know, they're called urinal cakes. There's a disappointing birthday. <laughs> Did you get me a cake? <laughs> Is not your favourite. <laughs> the fog sign on the motorway. How pointless is that? <laughs> Who's it for? People driving along thinking, I can't see a fucking thing. <laughs> I wonder if I've got cataracts. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, look, it's fog, what am I like? <laughs> do you all do the same thing as me? When you drive normally, you drive like that, yeah? That's the normal driving position. A little bit of fog, you drive like that. <laughs> you get a little bit closer. You get a better view, just in case the fog is in the car. <laughs> well, what I'd like to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is tell you what this show is actually about. I've had an extraordinary 12 months. I've had a life-changing experience. I was a very cynical man, and uh, I, I didn't really have any religion in my life, and I've, I've let spirituality in in the last 12 months, and it's been extraordinary. So this evening, what I'd really like to do is to test... A, I'm joking, there's no God. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're Muslim, in which case there definitely is a God. <laughs> I'm not a fucking idiot. Seriously, I don't mind upsetting the Church of England. What are they going to do? Hold a fate? <laughs> I'm sure there are Christians out there in the audience now thinking if I get hold of that Jimmy Carr, I'm going to bloody well forgive him. <laughs> Creationists, the right-wing Christians, creationists believe every word Genesis says. I don't even think Phil Collins is a good drummer. <laughs> People with Tourette's. <laughs> what makes them tick? <laughs> that was originally about suicide bombers. I've toned it down for you. <laughs> if you were to count up every hot dog sold outside football grounds in Britain on any given Saturday, chances are you're autistic. <laughs> right, well, I feel we've warmed up. Let's try some properly offensive jokes, see how we get along. 99% of women kiss with their eyes closed, which is why it's so difficult to identify a rapist. <laughs> Let's have a little time out there <laughs> and discuss the rules of the gig. <laughs> Feed line, punch line, I'll take care of that. And then you can either laugh, you can laugh and applaud, I'll be flattered and delighted, or you can go, ooh, <laughs> in a disapproving style. What you can't do is laugh, applaud, then look round and go, whoa. <laughs> Not having that. <laughs> Let's give it a go. I saw a headline in the Evening Standard. It said, Football Rapist Quiz. I thought, was that a story or a competition? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know? Do you know what you're meant to do if you're stung by a jellyfish? Wheel on it. Yeah, piss on it, wheel on it. It's exactly the right answer. I didn't know that. I got told. Everyone told me, I went on holiday, everyone told me, if you get stung by a jellyfish, you're meant to pee on it. Yeah? I'll tell you this much, it doesn't work as well on shark bites. <laughs> the boy's family were livid. <laughs> Apparently, once they've been dead for a couple of hours, there is very little you can do. <laughs> no amount of piss is bringing them back. <laughs> It is true, urine can be used to disinfect a wound. It's, it's often taken the wrong way. That's why I no longer work with the St John's Ambulance. <laughs> Come here, love. That looks nasty. <laughs> it's apparently not what anyone wants to see. Oh, on that same subject, I've got a little time-saving tip for the gentleman in the room. 
I don't wash my hands after I pee. <laughs> what I do is I wash my cock in the morning, then I'm good for the day. <laughs> Sometimes it's the best bit of my day. <laughs> I am very thorough. <laughs> do you know what you're meant to do if you're attacked by a bear? Does anyone know? Shit on yourself. <laughs> I have a feeling that might be quite involuntary. <laughs> that sounds like advice given by a forest ranger trying to kind of go, well, no, that's the procedure. <laughs> I saw the bear coming at me, I thought, oh. <laughs> I suppose you could try and piss on it. Although I think if you whipped it out in front of a bear, it would think, oh, an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> Any other suggestions as to what to do if you're attacked by a bear? Make yourself big. Make yourself big? Yes, make yourself big. Go and grab something to eat. <laughs> Work out a little. Maybe buy one of those puffer jackets. Get back to the bear as soon as you possibly can. <laughs> Do you mean go like that? <laughs> You're like an advert for natural selection. <laughs> There's a bear coming at us. Don't worry, I'll handle this. I imagine the bear would think, oh, look, Monster Munch. <laughs> but they look, novelty food. Any other suggestions as to what to do if you're attacked by a bear? Play dead. play dead is exactly the right answer. Do you know why you're meant to play dead? It's to get used to how you're going to be in a minute. <laughs> Just so there's less mess. A snake bite isn't going to kill you. Unless, of course, you're allergic to cider. <laughs> That's a joke for the goths. <laughs> Think about it, they're the ones that need cheering up. <laughs> I love swearing, I've always quite... Oh, you all right, sorry, what was that? I missed a bit of chat. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> sorry, it's, it's not the telly, if you talk, I can hear. <laughs> now you're looking pissed off, you're thinking, I didn't press the red button, it's gone all interactive. <laughs> What, what were you saying? <laughs> Go on, say. I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. You thought... You... <laughs> you just said, I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what happened was... <laughs> OK, in a joke... A joke is like two stories, yeah? <laughs> and the first story makes you make an assumption about something. So the assumption people made about snake bite in, in that joke was that it was a snake biting you. But, but he, he, he. <laughs> That's the setup of the joke. So you made the assumption he's talking about a snake bite, a snake biting someone. In the second part of the joke, often known as the punchline, <laughs> what, you'll, what you'll find is that rug will be, will be whipped from under you and you'll realise that the assumption you made was erroneous. <laughs> Suddenly revealing a fact that was previously concealed is, is the nature of all one-liners, madam. So, in essence, I was talking about both snake bites, the thing that happens when a snake bites you, <laughs> and also the drink. <laughs> no problem at all, it's lovely to help. <laughs> it's actually it's nice to have you here this evening, because I think one of the charity gigs I did helped pay for the minibus that brought you here. <laughs> Nice to see that money wasn't wasted. <laughs> oh, bless her little heart. Uh, what are you making of the rest of the show? Or are you just enjoying the spangly things? <laughs> I've always liked swearing. I'm a big fan of swearing, especially sort of middle-class polite swearing, the sort of swearing parents do in front of the kids to pretend they don't swear. Terms like effing. We all know it means fucking, but it's a nicer way of saying it, isn't it? I've got a story about this. I was at a wedding with my friend Craig. He's Scottish. He swears a lot. <laughs> See, I don't need to say both of those things. <laughs> anyway, we're all suited and booted at this very posh wedding on our very best behaviour. He leans across the table. He says, pardon my French. I thought we were in trouble here. <laughs> 
I happen to know you don't speak French. <laughs> you barely speak English. <laughs> Says, pardon my French, but we all know Paul is an effing cunt. <laughs> As if that's the bit of the sentence that needed cleaning up there. <laughs> I tell you what, I think we're shit at as a nation. I think we're terrible at languages. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I think the British are terrible at languages, and I think that's why, at one stage, we had an empire. <laughs> I think our arrogance got us an empire, because, we, you know, we got sailing ships and we went off around the world trying to buy stuff to bring back to show off. That's what you do on your holidays. <laughs> we arrived on the shores of a foreign land, we got out the boat and we said, I'd like to buy some spices, please. <laughs> I'm getting nothing here, Jeremy. <laughs> Say it a bit louder. Right you are. I'd like to buy some spices, please. <laughs> Still nothing. Well, I'll fetch the muskets, we'll build a railway in 200 years, they'll get them a call centre. <laughs> Very much an abridged version of empire, but that's what happened. I've got another story about how bad we are at languages. I was doing a bit of material last year about the rioting all over Paris. French people rioting, it's funny. <laughs> oh, quick, Pierre, they have a water cannon. If we're not careful, we'll be washed. <laughs> and I wanted to check I hadn't offended anyone, so I said, are there any French people in? Someone shouted, "Si, sí, senor. <laughs> I thought, that's a new kind of stupid. Because <laughs> it's Spanish. My favourite story of the last year concerned an Oxford student. He was walking home late one night and he sexually harassed a police horse. <laughs> Not like that. That'd be my favourite story ever. <laughs> but he was. He was walking home late one night and he called the police horse gay. <laughs> Th that was his crime. Now, if ever there was a victimless crime, that's it. Calling a police horse gay. For a start, there's nothing the matter with being gay. Secondly, it's a horse. It can't understand. <laughs> Thirdly, even if by some miracle it could understand, I think the horse would be OK with being called gay, because I think a horse would be fairly sexually self-confident. <laughs> I mean, for a start, it's hung like itself. <laughs> but the policeman didn't let it go. No, he got off the horse, he arrested the young man, took him to the cells overnight. In the end, he was fined £70 through the courts for calling a police horse gay. I wish I'd been his lawyer. I would have got him off. Because in his defence, the horse was standing naked on all fours in the middle of the street. <laughs> with a uniform man on his back. That is quite gay. <laughs> you're gay, right? <laughs> Come on, you're so far in the closet, you're having adventures in Narnia. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, I thoroughly approve. It's a lifestyle choice. The wrong choice. <laughs> no, but if God didn't approve of homosexuality, you would have sent some sort of plague to wipe them out. <laughs> oh, easy. If anyone's offended, can I refer you to my earlier comments where I said I don't believe in God? And then respectfully request, you fuck off. <laughs> it's only a joke. Jokes are fine. Proper homophobia isn't fine. I don't like it when the tabloids are homophobic, because they're such an important part of our culture, the tabloids. When they get it wrong, it sends a very bad message. Do you remember last year when they outed a footballer? Which is a terrible thing to do anyway. They outed this footballer, and in the course of the article where they outed this guy as a homosexual, they described consensual oral sex between two adults, yeah? So two fellas sucking each other off. <laughs> they described that as a prank. <laughs> How demeaning to homosexuals is that? To have that act of lovemaking described as a prank. And it also doesn't work from the other point of view, because I like to think of myself as something of a prankster. <laughs> But I don't think I've ever said... <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> don't forget the balls. I... That's you. You really do care. Where about you from, sir? You're from New York. What are you doing over here? Do you mind me asking? You, you do something? You moved here for work? Yeah. What, what sort of work do you do? I mean, I'm not suggesting I need to see your papers, but... <laughs> What are you bringing to the party? Uh, finance and IT. Finance and IT? I can't really think what that is. Is that cash points? <laughs> uh, 
Hang on, you're, you're looking at ATMs. <laughs> it's our language, you fucking ruined it. <laughs> oh. yeah, Next time you have a fight with someone, stop getting us involved. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting blamed for everything. Go on, you can. If it weren't for us, we'd be speaking German. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if it wasn't for you, we'd be speaking German. How little do you know about our language abilities? <laughs> There's no way we'd have picked it up in 60 years. <laughs> One area of life where comedy lets me down all the time is greeting cards. I love sending cards to people, but I can never think of anything funny to write in them. So I thought, well, I'm a professional comedian. I'll sit down and, and give it some time and some effort, come up with some things you could put in cards. So, you know, it might help out next time you're in that spot. Life is pain, misery and suffering, an inevitable march towards death. Happy fifth birthday, Kate. <laughs> By the time you read the end of this sentence, you'll have forgotten the first half, but what the hell, have a great 87th, Grandma. <laughs> office cards are difficult, leaving cards especially. You know when you have to all sign it, everyone in the office? What do you write, especially if you don't know the person? <laughs> Obviously it doesn't matter, because you're never going to see the fucker again, so... <laughs> Here's what I'd recommend. We never really had a chance to get to know one another, but I've always noticed you in the office, and I just have a feeling we'd get on together. How about a drink sometime, maybe dinner, who knows where it might lead. <laughs> Good luck with the baby. <laughs> Obviously, the worst kind of card you can come across in everyday life is the whip round card. It's a fucking nightmare. The whip, a big envelope comes around, a bit of change in the bottom. <laughs> who starts it? No one likes it. I've got a theory it's the person who the whip round is for. <laughs> it's a whip round for Jimmy. <laughs> Thought you were Jimmy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's what I think you should write in the next whip round card. You don't know me, but I got bullied into putting five pounds in your collection because I didn't have any change and people were watching. <laughs> So fuck you. <laughs> For what it's worth, this is my favourite thing that I've ever written in a card. No one wants to die alone, tied up in a shed, having been tortured for days. So be my Valentine. <laughs> Anonymity is key to the success of that. <laughs> Valentine's is easy. All you need to do is get a card with a couple of hearts on it and go for the traditional message. I tend to go for the, you know, the really old-fashioned sentiment. I love you. There I said it. Now will you please let me do it up the bum? <laughs> that started a conversation. Great. <laughs> Valentine's is weird, isn't it? Because it's the one day of the year where you get anonymous mail from a stranger saying, I'd like to fuck you, <laughs> and you go, oh. <laughs> Any other day, that's stalking. <laughs> and I found that out the hard way. <laughs> get well soon. Get well soon cards are difficult, because it says it all on the front, doesn't it? Get well soon. That's all you want to say. So, you know, what do you write inside? Here's what I'd suggest. Or your wife will start looking elsewhere. <laughs> Motivation. <laughs> what about when get well soon is not appropriate? Yeah? I've got a friend who's quite seriously ill. Getting well soon would be miraculous. Getting well at all, we're told, is a long shot. So, but there was nothing for me in the card shop. I had to make my own card in the end. I went with die with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> He's a funny guy. I think he'll see the funny side. <laughs> and if he doesn't, it's not as if I have to avoid him for long. World's best dad. If you want to see your kids again, leave £10,000 in the bins around the back of Dixon's. <laughs> Congratulations on your results. Negative, who'd have thought? <laughs> Good luck in your exam. I'm sure it's benign. <laughs> I know you think that's offensive, but it's not when you compare it to this. <laughs> I know nothing's happened yet. <laughs> it's a card on the front. There is a girl throwing her hair back, clearly having a brilliant time. She's 16. It just says, you're 16. 
and then inside I've written, but it's still our little secret, lots of love, Dad. <laughs> Congratulations, you're 18. Stone, nearly at your target weight. <laughs> I'm having to do a lot of baby cards recently because a lot of my friends are having babies and you've got to do the card for when the baby arrives but also the one when they find out they're pregnant. So, first one, you're having a baby. Thank fuck for that, I thought you'd been getting fat. <laughs> you're having a baby. And that's final, yours the Catholic Church. <laughs> oh, they're sticklers for that kind of thing. It's a girl. Better luck next time. Lots of love, the Chinese. <laughs> um, is anyone celebrating anything this evening? Is anyone a birthday, anniversary, anything going on in your lives? Birthday! Are you six tuplets or something? What? <laughs> Who's got a birthday up there? <laughs> Hi. How old are you? 17. 17? Great news, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> so you're 17, what, today? No, March. March. <laughs> no, sorry, you, you've misunderstood. You come and sit with her. <laughs> We've, uh... We've all got birthdays <laughs> at different times of the year. When someone says, do you have a birthday, they, they tend to mean now. They don't, they don't just mean, were you, were you born of woman? <laughs> March, you can fuck off. <laughs> oh, oh. What, what do you do? Um, I go to school. <laughs> no, I meant sexually. She's 17, that's fine. <laughs> it's not fine, it's deeply creepy. <laughs> By the way, that woman gave me a thumbs up, though. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, you pop up there and groom her. <laughs> I'll be up in a minute, you bloody weirdo. <laughs> Has anyone else got a birthday? More legitimate. You've got a birthday. <laughs> and what, well, how old are you? Uh, 26. You're 26 tomorrow? OK, well, that's a problem. What, what's your name? David. David, all right, I'll write your card, David. <laughs> what, what do you do? <laughs> You're a doctor. Okay. Happy birthday, <laughs> David. I, m my wrist. What's happened? <laughs> How annoyed are you at that? <laughs> and everyone you've ever met. <laughs> I've got a terrible rash on my cock. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. It's not terrible. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'll wear a condom. There won't be a problem. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not going to wear a condom. <laughs> so you're a doctor. What kind of doctor are you? Uh, I like paediatrics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say that I approve, but I admire your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, David. I've written in big, don't touch them. <laughs> Just a little reminder. There you go, there's a card. Happy birthday to David. Let's give, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> um, have you ever looked at a bill in a restaurant where it says service not included and thought, no, it wasn't, was it? <laughs> I was staying in a hotel last week. I came down for breakfast. I said, I'll have a continental breakfast, as is my want. The waiter said to me, what room are you in? I said, it's the dining room. <laughs> Sex is always better in hotels. Have you noticed that, ladies and gentlemen? Sex is always better in hotels. Yeah. Why is that? Is it because it's with a hooker? Because <laughs> you don't have to what, sorry? Because you don't have to clean the sheets. <laughs> How are you fucking her? <laughs> that there's a whole... Maybe later, Jimmy. Maybe later. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> a little bit of the bum sex going on. 
I always think you know you're doing something bad sexually. Bad in a good way. When you think we better put a towel down before that happens. <laughs> they think you always know we're doing something a bit experimental. Yeah, we better just cover that first, because... <laughs> Yeah, I've never done this before. It could end badly. <laughs> I don't even know if you're going to make it through, but good luck, love. <laughs> Do you think strippers get home after a hard day undressing and think, oh, more work? <laughs> da, 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 da. I realise that's the worst mime of a stripper. There's a... <laughs> I'd love to go to a strip club where they just went like that. <laughs> That's my vagina. Have a butcher's. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> I've discovered, incidentally, the worst thing you can say when a stripper is performing. I was at my friend Toby Stagdo, and we booked a stripper, but she fell through on the day because she was unwell. So the agency sent us a replacement. Anyway, there's 20 of us in the basement of a restaurant in West London watching this girl do some fairly grisly things, which I will come to later. <laughs> and Lee turned to Harvey, and he whispered, and I don't know where he learned to whisper, I'm guessing in a fucking helicopter. Because <laughs> we all heard. He went, yeah, I heard the fit one let us down. <laughs> it echoed round the room. <laughs> That's how big her vagina was. <laughs> she was doing some fairly horrible things. She, she was doing a thing with a bottle. I was disgusted. Red wine with fish. <laughs> I once went out with a girl who was so fat, it felt like I was two-timing her. <laughs> I'm joking, I didn't go out with her. <laughs> the big problem they talk about these days is childhood obesity. They talk about that all the time, childhood obesity. And they say these kids are greedy. They're not greedy. They've just got slow metabolisms. <laughs> and very fast, cheap-eating hands. <laughs> there are one million obese children in Britain today. Do you realise if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might lose a little bit of fucking weight? <laughs> I worry that these obese children are sending a very mixed message to our paedophiles. <laughs> sure, they're easier to catch. <laughs> but who wants to fiddle with a fatty? The Sex Offenders Register. I'm not even sure they should be in school. <laughs> screaming in bed, ladies, that's all very well, screaming in bed. Fine, express yourself. But why does it always have to be the same thing? Ah, you're on my hair! <laughs> well, maybe if you got a Brazilian, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> Buying presents for women, that's a nightmare, isn't it? I thought, I can't do flowers again, I can't do chocolates again. I'll go for lingerie. Mum was livid. <laughs> Men think about sex every seven seconds, which I think makes talking to your dad creepy. <laughs> People say the book's always better than the film. Yeah, the book's always better than the film. I, I don't agree with that. I can think of loads of films that are much better than the book. Come guzzling sluts. <laughs> I must have seen that film a hundred times. <laughs> it's much better than the book. The book's all stuck together and it smells funny. <laughs> Applauding that, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Size isn't important, it's what you do with it. Would you agree with that, ladies? No! no. <laughs> There's a lady over there that likes a big cock and she doesn't care who knows it. <laughs> Sorry, it's quite possible you just whispered that and it picked up an echo. I've just always thought that's such a retarded expression. <laughs> Size is important, it's what you do with it. Well, I was planning to pop it in your mouth and your vagina. How's that? <laughs> is that going to be a total waste of time? <laughs> I like it when ladies get tattoos. Have any ladies in here got tattoos? Yeah. What have you got? A vent. A what? A vent. You've got a vent? <laughs> I think that may be the crudest term I've ever heard for a vagina. <laughs> I've got a vent. 
Well, if you're particularly gassy, I suppose. <laughs> Whereabouts is this vent? On my arm. On your arm, you've got a, a vent. <coughs> you, you have, by all accounts, got some sort of vent. <laughs> Fucking go, girl. <laughs> Nothing says feminine like air conditioning equipment. Nothing says, I'm hot, like, I need a fucking vent. <laughs> That's how hot I fucking am. Has anyone got one on the small of their back? Yeah. What have you got? A football symbol. A football symbol? Yeah. <laughs> would you like to see it? What, sorry? Yeah, would you like to see it? Yes, I would. Yay. Have a look. A football symbol. What is it? Gaelic football. It's Gaelic football? Yeah. Irish football. Right, no, I know what Gaelic football is. <laughs> How come you've got that there? Did you do the whole team and you got a bonus? <laughs> that, I don't know. It's just, it's always struck me, it's a lovely place to get a tattoo because it's discreet. When you ask a lot of ladies why they get a tattoo, they, they, they say, I've, I've got one there because it's just for me and my partner. Or partners. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, but my question is, if he's looking at that, he's already having a good time. <laughs> the last thing he needs is more visual stimulus. <laughs> What you've basically got on your lower back is a target. <laughs> Having said that, I really like tattoos there, so I'm trying to convince my girlfriend to get one. I want her to either get... If you can read this, you're fucking me. <laughs> or, now wash your hands. <laughs> I'd like to get a tattoo. I'm thinking about getting one just there, just across there, just above the speedos, just above the banana hammock. <laughs> Saying, caution, choking, hazard. <laughs> Ages 16 and up. <laughs> May contain nuts. <laughs> one in three people fantasise about group sex. Three in one people is group sex. <laughs> I'm not in favour of all kinds of group sex. I'm not in favour of the two guys, one girl, threesome. For the very simple reason, I never want to see another man's happy face. <laughs> because women, when they orgasm, look beautiful and serene, full of life. I've seen it in magazines and films. <laughs> but men, when they orgasm, look as if they're drinking vinegar through their eyes. <laughs> Canal. Has, has anyone been involved in that kind of caper? Has anyone had the two guys, one girl, threesome? <laughs> no. Have you been involved in that kind of caper, sir? No. You're not willing to say. What was it? Three fellas, was it? <laughs> <laughs> your, your brother has. <laughs> what, go on, what happened, sir? Go on, tell us. You started drinking and it just happened. Yeah. Well, it happened. You got hammered, yeah. did you? What, the guy missed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, sir, <laughs> and I'm guessing you've never been with a woman but you've made up a story. I just, my question is, I don't know what the etiquette would be, you know? Because do you change ends at half time? <laughs> I think it would take more willpower than I have not to high five the other fella. <laughs> nice work. I think if you're a gentleman, you would change ends. Because, you know, she's got enough to be thinking about. I can't even do that. <laughs> Let alone. Ah! <laughs> There's cocks everywhere! Ah! I saw a thing in the paper a couple of months ago. It said, if you're filling in an application form these days, trying to apply for a job or maybe applying for university, something like that, anything where you have to fill in a form, they don't care about your qualifications as much. What they want is someone with a bit of a sense of humour. I thought, well, I could help with that. I think of some funny things you could put in forms. Might help someone out. Is anyone applying for a job or anything like that? Oh, what are you applying for? A teacher. To be a teacher? Ooh. <laughs> I read a thing recently that said that uh, the best teachers, the ones that graduate at the very top of teacher training, go and teach at special needs schools. I couldn't help thinking, isn't that a bit of a waste? <laughs> what are they going to get? A better standard of potato painting? <laughs> I 
Well, this might help if you're getting your CV together, you never know. <laughs> Education and qualifications, you've got to kick off with that for the CV. I went to boarding school, I was a day boy, at least I think that's what they were shouting. <laughs> I got a double first at Cambridge, first person to get their balls out in choir practice, first person to be hospitalised by a chaplain. Personal statement. That's an annoying thing. You've got to do a personal statement. Now, you've already filled in a, a CV and an application form, and then they might write a little essay about yourself at the end. It's rubbish. Here's my personal statement. You can borrow it if you like. I've got tiny balls. <laughs> balls like marbles. Is that personal enough? <laughs> I shaved them. There, I said it. <laughs> what do you expect the position you've applied for to involve? Endless meetings, a few months of keeping my head down, a fight with the boss at the Christmas party, a drunken sexual dalliance with a colleague, some sort of harassment tribunal followed by a swift departure. <laughs> a little bit of realism there, a little bit of truth for you. Oh, I applied to be in the police. Any policemen in? Undercover, I see. <laughs> well, they've got a great form, the, uh, the police. What's your greatest personal achievement to date, they ask. I've said I've stolen over £16,000 worth of stationery without once getting caught. <laughs> What I used to do is I used to take all the post-it notes and pens and pads and ink cartridges and laptops, stuff you're going to nick anyway. <laughs> just to take it, instead of nicking it in my bag or my coat, what I used to do is get all that stuff, put it in a box, yeah, and then when it was full, take it to the post room and have them deliver it to my house. <laughs> it was fucking brilliant. Because <laughs> not only did you get the stuff you were going to steal anyway, you also got kind of a Christmas morning surprise two days later. <laughs> a package for me. <laughs> Who could have been so kind? It was me. <laughs> what do you consider your greatest weakness? I demand too much of myself and others. Either that or whores. <laughs> How much alcohol do you consume over a seven-day period? How do you possibly expect me to remember? <laughs> I mean, last month, Asda did a two-for-one on Malibu. I lost a fortnight. <laughs> Have you ever misused any illegal substances? Yes. I once accidentally snorted heroin thinking it was cocaine. <laughs> I'm not proud of that, but it happened. <laughs> Best to be honest. This is a sad state of affairs, but this is the last question on the police form. Are you a racist or have you ever been a member of the BNP? <laughs> I've said no, but I'm a fast learner and I'll do anything to get this job. <laughs> We all saw that documentary. <clears throat> oh, I applied to work at Starbucks, the posh coffee shop, because I'm in there every day anyway. I thought I might as well. Do you enjoy working as part of a team, they ask. I've said, absolutely. I very much enjoy the workplace team dynamic. It's easier to get away with stuff. <laughs> Plus, there are those long lunches and the team building weekends where you get to make a raft and finger each other and that. <laughs> when was the last time you received great customer service and why was it so memorable? I was with a wonderful prostitute the other night. <laughs> Seriously, she had a vagina like a mouse's ear. <laughs> I imagine that would mean she could hear you coming. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Where did you hear about this role? You, you can't just say, Steve told me. You've got to dress it up a bit, so here's, here's my version. Feel free to use it if you need it. Well, I just returned from teaching the Harvard MBA. My wife, Scarlett Johansson, and I were entertaining our good friend, Professor Stephen Hawking, who had come to ask my advice on his latest theory concerning the evolution of the universe. He and I were in the library, browsing through my most recent translation of Etruscan hymns into Middle Flemish. When he said, and I'll never forget this, he said, Jimmy, there's a job going at Starbucks, and I think you'd be perfect for it. <laughs> Only he said it in his hilarious Dalek voice. <laughs> <clears throat> I applied to be in the fire service. They've got a very good form. They asked, what skills do you think you possess that you could bring to the fire service? I've said I'm good at playing pool, sitting on my fat ass, collecting for comic relief and plumbing. <laughs> if anything, I'm overqualified. <laughs> I realise if my house burns down, they'll bring marshmallows. That's fine. <laughs> they also ask, what's your greatest personal achievement to date? I've said when I was 14, I just managed to suck the very tip of my winky. <laughs> what a 
what we've all tried. It's no one's proudest moment. Unless, of course, you succeeded, in which case, well done. But we have all tried, ladies. You're looking at me like you don't believe me now. Let's, let's do a little sociological experiment. Gentlemen, if you have never tried to fillet yourself, suck yourself off. So I, I was saying what it meant. I wasn't saying suck yourself off. I was, that wasn't an order. Gentlemen, if you've never tried to fillet yourself, raise your hand now. <laughs> That's my favourite bit of the show. It's the couples that have clearly been together for a while, Ally Best. It's, it's the woman initially going... <laughs> no, he, he said, put your hand up, he never listens. <laughs> and then the slow look of realisation. <laughs> You're optimistic, you can't even touch your fucking toes. <laughs> Quite a few of you down there have got your hands up, you guys. Did you all have a go on each other's, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way, sorry, you guys, the, the, I presume you're someone's dad and then all the kids there. Is that the, yeah, okay, so you've got dad and then kid, 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 <laughs> kid, kid. And it went basically, dad put his hand up and then son went, yeah, and then the next one went, yeah, and then the next one went, yeah, I've definitely never done that. <laughs> Down the line. It was like a domino effect, but with horrible lies that make the baby Jesus cry. <laughs> Even the little baby Jesus tried to suck his own cock. Come on, let's... <laughs> can you say that? Yeah, sure you can, why not? <laughs> Prince can suck his own cock. And by that, I mean Prince can suck his own cock. I've had it with him. <laughs> why did you leave your previous job? Well, that's tricky to answer. You can't just put embezzling. <laughs> Said, I needed a new challenge. And after you fucked the boss's wife, where else is there to go? <laughs> What will you bring to the job? I'll be bringing my sister's kids with me on Tuesday afternoons. <laughs> when she's doing aqua aerobics. <laughs> Give an example of when you've used initiative. I've got a couple of different examples for you in case you don't like the first one. There was a fight outside the pub when I was 17 between these two massive tattoo blokes. One of the men was knocked on the pavement unconscious. I seized the opportunity and kicked him in the face. <laughs> In case you didn't like that, I've got another version for you. I got ID made up saying I'm from the gas board. It's not very convincing, but then pensioners don't have great eyesight. <laughs> and if she can't see the ID is fake, then does she really need a telly? <laughs> Describe yourself in three words. Smart, dynamic, intelligent, attentive. <laughs> Do you have any special needs? They ask this on quite a lot of forms now. Do you have any special needs? I've written back, yeah, you've got special needs. <laughs> Note the correct spelling of, yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of growing up to do. And last one, how long is your notice period? I usually notice stuff almost immediately. <laughs> Women think men will piss in the sink if the toilet's busy. Do you think that? Yes. Bullshit. <laughs> we'll piss in the sink if it's nearer. <laughs> Train toilets are disgusting. I wrote to complain. Well, I say I wrote to complain, I scrawled. This is disgusting. <laughs> on the mirror, in shit. <laughs> but the sentiment was there, and that's the important thing. I don't know if anyone else has got this, but my girlfriend tells me about her day in real time. <laughs> Sex can get monotonous within a relationship. Same person, every month. <laughs> I remember the first girl I ever held. You never forget your first hostage. <laughs> I tell you what's embarrassing, getting your cock stuck in the flies of another man's trousers. <laughs> Could you move around a bit? Because I think you're encouraging the others. What's your name, Adam? I better ask. Gemma. Gemma. Hello, Gemma. Hello. Um, um, 
Is there any chance you could just pop the Chinese love balls out for a minute? <laughs> you seem to be teetering on the edge of orgasm at all times. <laughs> I've seen it in films, I know. <laughs> what do you do, Gemma? Um, I'm a cheerleading coach. You're a cheerleading coach? <laughs> the easiest job in the world? <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's a new name for cheerleading coach, though, isn't there? Don't we call it grooming now? <laughs> so, what, who, do you, who do they cheerlead for? Um, well, um, I have a squad called the Fury Jams. You have a squad called the what? The Fury Jams. The Fury Jams. <laughs> Is that a term for menstruation? <laughs> There's a cheerleading squad called the Fury Jams. <laughs> You're right, love. Now I've got the Fury Jams. <laughs> and you teach people to cheerlead? Yes, like stunting, like throwing people up in the air. These are, these are grown adults? No, I've got um, children ages 10 to 16. 10 to 16? Yeah. Okay, and you get them to...? Well, it's not just pom-poms and showing your bottom. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I'm no expert. <laughs> I know there's a lot of showering. There's more showering than you would imagine. But has anyone else got any cheerleading DVDs? <laughs> I'm something of a connoisseur. <laughs> I have a collection. And mainly, they like to get sudsy. <laughs> Let's move this along. But lo lovely, lovely to meet you with your hilarious laugh. It's infectious. I like it. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks. thanks and thanks very much for cheerleading. Thank you for helping our young people go. <laughs> It's valuable work you do. <laughs> I've got a little tip for you. If you get stopped by the police in the car and they, they do the usual thing of getting you to wind down your window and say, excuse me, sir, do you, uh, do you know why we stopped you? Don't say, no, oh, did you forget? <laughs> they fucking hate that. I'm actually a very good driver. Last year, I got 25 points. <laughs> My maths teacher always used to say, show you working out. So in maths, I'd always wear a vest. <laughs> My best friend at school was asthmatic for a laugh. He used to hide his ventilator inhaler. <laughs> what a wheeze. I had a friend that used to self-harm because he was bullied. I used to think, whose side are you on? <laughs> I tell you who I blame for all the drugs in schools. The supply teachers. <laughs> are there any goths in today? Have we got any goths? No goths in the audience. Oh, there's one goth there. Hello, goth. How are you? <laughs> you all right? I'm loving the goths. Don't get the wrong idea. It's just whenever I see a goth walking down the street, I don't see one person. I see two disappointed parents. <laughs> thinking he used to be such a lovely boy and now he looks like a slutty girl. <laughs> not that I'm not having a go at young people. Some young people do have genuine problems. Some young people have got terrible skin. I had a pizza delivered last week. I thought the guy's face was a special promotion. <laughs> In fairness, it did look delicious. <laughs> it was all cheesy and bubbly and whatnot. If you do have bad skin, look on the positive side. It's nature's own condom. <laughs> school exams are a lot easier these days. Yeah, a lot easier than when I was at school. Apart from history, that's got harder. More things have happened. <laughs> when I was at school, when I was 17, my mate Anthony, on his 17th birthday, brought in a 125cc motorbike. He thought he was the dog's bollocks. He came in. We, we all went, it's really dangerous, man. Just be careful on that, yeah? He went, yeah, dangerous, whatever. Think about how many birds I can pick up with this. I thought, well, unless you join a stunt team, one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thin line between neighbourhood watch and becoming a vigilante, and it's a line you cross when you buy a cape. <laughs> Do you know there's now a warning on superhero costumes? If you buy a superhero costume, it says on it, this costume does not give you special powers. <laughs> or, indeed, the right to see your children. <laughs> Kids.
we'd say the funniest things. Please don't hurt Mummy. <laughs> She's already dead. <laughs> Are there any mums in by shouting out, who's a mum? Yes. Proper ones, not just ones that have done it to get a flat. <laughs> I'm kidding, we all love mums. You know, mums are great. They're the great unsung heroes of our society. They do so much for so little. What do mums ever get? All they ever get is, you know, not even a thank you, just Mother's Day. Mother's Day's rubbish, isn't it? It's like a Toblerone from the garage. <laughs> or some flowers from a lamppost. <laughs> what? I think it's all right to give your mum flowers you've taken from a lamppost where there's been an accident. Because if you think about it, you wouldn't do that if she'd brought you up a little bit better. <laughs> It's her fault. <laughs> of course, one of the major supermarkets is trying to redress the balance, yeah? There's just Mother's Day for mums, but they've decided to have a Mum of the Year competition. Mum of the Year to sort of, you know, just reward ordinary, everyday mums. Acknowledge, you know, all the good work mums do. The only thing I would question about their charitable endeavour is the massive banners they put outside every one of their superstores saying, Enter your mum today. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, if she's up for that, she deserves something. <laughs> Might I suggest a call from social services? <laughs> Sugary tea was my mum's cure for everything. Her, like, elixir of life. If you had any kind of problem, emotional, physical, financial, it wouldn't matter, she would say, come in, I'll make you a nice sweet cup of tea. Which was fine until we found out my brother was diabetic. <laughs> Being diabetic's a pain in the ass, because it's sort of a mid-range illness, isn't it? It's not a cold, it's a bit more serious than that, but it's unlikely to kill you and it won't get you into the Paralympics. <laughs> mid-range. You've got to really search for the positives with the mid-range things. Of course, the positive thing about being diabetic is, of course, you can kill yourself with sweets. <laughs> I'm going to end it all, pass the sherbet dip, perhaps. <laughs> and that might just cheer you up enough not to fucking bother. I've got a half-brother. Same mum and dad, but he's a hermaphrodite. I had a run-in with a transsexual, not, not your classic, you know, I went to Amsterdam and I met someone in a bar and one thing led to another and we ended up back at the hotel and, you know, had a few drinks. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I'll have paid now. <laughs> not like that. No, what happened was this, this uh, transsexual, this person that used to be a man and is now a woman, came to help us out on a show. She was doing a little bit for us in a TV show and, um, <gasps> She, uh, they'd done a brilliant job surgically. I mean, she looked like a woman. She looked brilliantly like a woman. But I think if you were born a man, there's certain things you will always maintain. There's certain masculine traits you will always have, even if they, whatever the surgeons do. And she came into the green room where we were all hanging out before the show, very demurely in, in high heels, and said, excuse me, where's the powder room? I said, you can't miss it. It's just down there on the right. She said, oh, thank you very much. Very demurely, tottered out on heels. Just as she was leaving the room, she picked up a paper, put it under her arm. <laughs> Most blokey thing in the world. <laughs> I've had a big lunch, I'm off for a massive shit! <laughs> well, what I'd like to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is help you. I'd like to become an agony aunt. A and to that end, I went and looked in lots of magazines at the agony aunt column. They're all genuine letters, these, and I went through and I, I thought, well, could I do better agony aunt answers? then they're agony aunts. And I think in many of the cases, yes, I bloody can. So I'll take you through some examples, and then maybe you could share with me some of your problems, and I will do my best to sort them out. Of course I will. All you've got to be to be an agony aunt is, is considerate and caring, compassionate. <laughs> my boyfriend loses his erection as soon as he goes anywhere near a condom. We have loads of foreplay, and he gets really hard, but as soon as he tries to put one on, he loses it. What can we do? Karen in Cleethorpes. <laughs> now, their response was, have a kiss and a cuddle, try again in 15 minutes. Good luck with that. She's not getting any better looking. <laughs> I've gone for this as an answer. In situations such as these, it's very easy to put the onus of blame onto the male, and this can cause enormous trauma and place unnecessary strain on a relationship. Therefore, it's worth reminding you it's often the woman's fault. <laughs> The penis is, if you will, a barometer of sexual attraction. And if you do not meet its high standards, it's likely you will go without the sex you so cravenly demand. <laughs> Having said that, here are some tips that might help. If your boyfriend wears glasses, perhaps suggest he takes them off for sex. <laughs> Simple but effective. 
Instead of using condoms, why don't you go on the pill and have weekly AIDS tests? <laughs> If you do get AIDS, Lemsip can help, or you could just walk it off. <laughs> this next one's from Woman's Own magazine. I've been with a lovely man for six months. He's just confessed to me that he likes to dress up in women's clothes, and I'm horrified. I feel so let down that I don't know if I can cope. It's from Jackie and Dunstable. I've written back. Pot kettle black, Jackie. <laughs> do you dress as a woman? <laughs> I bet you fucking do, you hypocrite. <laughs> Regards, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> This one requires a little bit of maturity from everyone. My boyfriend isn't really into having me perform oral sex. He says he's just too sensitive and it doesn't feel as good as intercourse. I've asked my other guy friends and they tell me it's weird because all guys like to receive oral sex. Are they right? I'm starting to wonder what's going on. Well, I've written back. If you can't suck a cock, really, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> Have you tried practising nodding at people with your mouth open? P.S. Don't neglect the balls. <laughs> this next one is surprisingly succinct when you consider the subject matter. One of my vaginal lips hangs lower than the other. <laughs> Could surgery even them up? I've said yes, but a cheaper alternative is to live as a spinster. <laughs> On that cheery note, do any of you have any problems you would like me to help you with? Anything at all. It can be as mundane as you like or as interesting. It, it hurts when you wee. <laughs> well, the good news is, sir, you have a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> the, the bad news... The bad news is you've announced that in, in a crowded theatre. <laughs> any other... any other problem? Oh, you've got a problem, sorry, yeah. Since I was little, I've been called Ginger and uh, Ginger Pubes. Since you, since you were little, you've been called Ginger and Ginger Pubes? <laughs> well, you are Ginger, what do you... <laughs> what do you fucking want? I can see how that's happened. It'd be a terrible miscarriage of justice if you had dark black hair. Have you got any advice to beat the bullies? Have I got any advice to beat the bullies? Uh, find someone weaker than you and sort of try and turn them against him. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm ginger? Look at this cunt. <laughs> no, I've got no... I mean, beating the bullies is... It's a, it's a tough thing. I think you should always... What do they say? Always oh, stand up to bullies, yeah, because then, then it's funnier for everyone else. <laughs> That's how the expression goes. Did your mum tell you that? Well, not really, no. No advice, she just lets them do it. No advice, she just lets them do it. <laughs> wow, she sounds great. <laughs> Is she not ginger as well? No. She's not your real mum. <laughs> Is, is your father ginger? No. <laughs> Have they told you you're adopted? <laughs> this is a hell of a way to find out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, how'd you find out you were adopted? They tell you when you were sort of six or seven, when you processed that information? Oh, I was at one of Jimmy Carr's DVD gigs. Uh, <laughs> and he told me. I'll give you a few more examples. Have a think of some more problems. Come, short, share. It'd be good for you. <laughs> All funny for me. One or the other. <laughs> I can never remember which. Since splitting up with my long-term boyfriend a year ago, I've had a string of one-night stands. I always feel cheap and used in the morning, and I swear I'll never do it again, but I can't seem to stop while I've written back. Quite an unusual opening to a letter. Give me an S, give me an L, give me a U, give me a T. <laughs> Did our cheerleader just go, woo? <laughs> give me an S, give me an L, give me a U, give me a T, and you went, woo. <laughs> woo, go, sluts. <laughs> God bless her. Um, I said, seriously, though, thanks for your letter. I understand your problem and I empathise. Could you be more specific with your contact details? <laughs> This is a letter to Spirit and Destiny magazine. It's a magazine aimed at people that like horoscopes, but also believe in witchcraft and ghosts and all that kind of thing. Has anyone here ever seen a ghost? Yeah, yeah you, you've seen a ghost. 
That's an extraordinary thing, because in the magazine, it, there's a specialist term for people that have seen a ghost. Schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> have you really seen a ghost? Um, well, sort of, when we were, like, 11, me and my friends. When you were 11? Yeah. Was there ectoplasm? <laughs> And an uncle you'd rather forget. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you saw a ghost. That's right. Make the bad man stop. Make the bad man stop. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, this magazine, Spirit and Destiny, is fantastic. Um, it's got an Agony Aunt column written by a white witch. Apparently, they're the best ones. A little bit racist, if you ask me, but... <laughs> that's the way these people roll. The letters are fantastic. I have a chronic neck problem, but several doctors and specialists can't find any physical cause. Is it possible that I brought this painful condition forward from a past life? <laughs> and how can I safely gain access to past lives to find out? <laughs> I've said, yes, it's highly likely you were hanged in the 1500s for being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question for people that believe in past lives. Would you like to buy some magic beans? <laughs> This one was written to Sugar Magazine, which is a magazine aimed at 14-year-old girls. I'm a girl of 14. Told you. <laughs> and I'm deeply in love with my cousin. Ooh. You have our interest. We are really close, such as having sex, going out to movies, etc. <laughs> That's a hell of a fucking sentence. One day, while having sex, his sister saw us and she is torturing us and saying she will tell both our parents and we're 100% sure our parents will not approve. Please help. I've written back. I say, go for it. <laughs> Cousins fucking, why not? <laughs> Your freakish offspring are the closest we'll ever get to real superheroes. <laughs> Think about it, if people like that don't have sex, one day we may run out of Channel 5 documentaries. <laughs> This is quite sad. I was sexually abused as a child, and I'm worried that my personality and history will lead me to abuse others. Have you thought about a career in the Catholic Church? <laughs> Any Catholics in? Stop touching kids? <laughs> I was raised Catholic. The thing that used to annoy me about church when I was little was all the standing up and sitting down and kneeling. I wish the priest could just pick a position and fuck me. <laughs> Any other problems? Who else has got a problem they'd like to share? <laughs> you, you can't stop wanking. <laughs> do, you, do you mean you do it a lot or you can't ejaculate? Because <laughs> that's how I know I finished. <laughs> if a special white wee wee comes out the end, <laughs> I immediately turn off whatever I was watching. <laughs> catch a glimpse of the reflection in the TV and think, oh, grow up. <laughs> so you, what, you masturbate a lot, do you? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, how many times a day are we talking? Uh, four. <laughs> four times a day? <laughs> Have you considered just giving into it and becoming a sex offender? <laughs> Clearly that's the road nature is pushing you down. <laughs> You must have four times a day. Uh, sorry, are you in a relationship? Is that, the, is that your girlfriend? No, I'm gay. You're gay? <laughs> but I, I've always just thought, if, you, if, you're a, if you're a gay man, it's, it's sort of easier, if you just want sex, to pick someone up. Yeah, is sure, it... but you can't always be arsed. Like, you can't... <laughs> you can't always be arsed? Well, you could go on top sometimes, couldn't you? <laughs> I think that's fine. That sound, you sound particularly healthy. Well done. How old are you? Do you mind me asking? Uh, 20. OK, I know 20's pretty reasonable. Yeah. I think when I was your age, I think I was, I was knocking a few out a day. <laughs> I think we all were. So we've got a little focus group of young men there. <laughs> Let's just find an average here. You're young fellas in your prime. How many are you rubbing out a day? <laughs> what? I'm only asking. You're not prepared to say? Five? <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's any other men in their 30s thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. 
there I am, thumbing in a softie with a beautiful woman. <laughs> He's watching a little bit of a little bit of Blue Peter and going, she's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it, there's no fucking justice. Uh, <laughs> good on you. Um, I have a question. Oh, go on. Why are women so ugly? How can you make them prettier? Why are what so ugly? Willies! Why are willies so ugly? Because you're a lesbian. <laughs> That's why. Few more of these. I have a horrid stepbrother. He shouts at me and my dad all the time, and I hate it. I want to run away from home. What should I do, Michelle? Fourteen. I've said, yeah, run away from home. But bear in mind, the thing about your stepbrother is he's not going to be quite as annoying as a Serbian pimp. <laughs> I have terrible period pains every six weeks. I suffer appalling mood swings, and for the first couple of days, I can hardly move with the pain. What do you recommend? They said, hot water bottle, bed rest, and chocolate. I've gone for the rather more old school. Have you considered building a shed in your garden where you can hide your shame? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great letter. I've fallen for my lodger. We get on incredibly well and have started sleeping together. I'd like to take the relationship to the next level, but I still need the rent. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I've got as far as saying, well, you've gone from boarding house to brothel. <laughs> Any other last problems? Anyone else got anything going on? I'm going home. You're going? <laughs> Sorry, I can see you and I think it may have happened. <laughs> I don't think there's, there's any ing needed. <laughs> uh, but that's nothing to be ashamed of, is it? Going bald? There's so not many bald people here. No, I mean, my audience are quite cool. <laughs> but, you know, occasionally one of you guys gets in and... <laughs> do, you, do you know why men go bald? It's quite interesting. I read an article in New Scientist magazine. Apparently, men go bald because of too much male hormone. So my advice to you is to stop swallowing. <laughs> yeah, Yo, go on. Yeah, your mum keeps calling me asking for sex. <laughs> my dead mum keeps on calling you. <laughs> At least twice. Right, she's barking up the wrong tree with you, isn't she? No, no you. You're up for it. Well, that's lovely to hear. <laughs> Not deterred by finding out she's dead, he's gone, yeah, I'll still do it, yeah. <laughs> it's, it is fine. I mean, that's, that would seem like a rude thing to shout out. Your mum's up for it. But I don't mind at all because I was warned that he was going to be here this evening. <laughs> I knew you were going to be here because I was actually warned by your mum. <laughs> no, seriously, she did. She warned me. She said... She said, my boy's going to be your show. <laughs> He's a wrong and he'll probably shout something out. What a cunt. <laughs> At least I think she was talking to me. I wasn't the only one there. <laughs> and she had a mouthful. <laughs> go on, have another go. I do this for a living. I love it. <laughs> Any other problems? We all fine? Well, the final couple of these. I met a man who's wonderful and we love each other very much. However, I recently found in his cupboard a homemade dildo made out of cardboard wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> Do you think he's gay? <laughs> I've said, but it looks bad, but on the bright side, he's recycling. <laughs> Last one. For the past two years, I've suspected that my dad is having an affair with a next-door neighbour. Should I confront him about it? I said, no, don't confront him. First off, look for clues. Do the next-door neighbour's kids look like you? <laughs> Have you been told not to fuck them? Is there a hole in the garden fence? <laughs> Are you sure slugs leave a trail like that? <laughs> Thanks very much. I saw a story in the local paper. It said an 83-year-old woman was marrying an 87-year-old man. I thought, oh, that's not going to last. <laughs> I hate it when the news tries to trick you. You know when you're listening to a song in the car, it finishes, the news headlines come on, it's a headline that grabs your attention. Something big and bad and important has happened. You think, well, I better turn this up and pay attention. 20 killed in suicide bomb attack. 
in Basra. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> you should have had to say that first. <coughs> I went to a pub quiz the other night, Native Cancer Research. I found myself halfway through thinking, well, how much closer to a cure for cancer are we getting <laughs> by doing a pub quiz? And then I thought, well, don't be cynical. Look at the best case scenario. What if they throw in the question, what's the cure for cancer? And someone flukes it. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Child cruelty, what do you think? Good thing, bad thing? <laughs> it's a bad thing, yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> I think it's universally acknowledged that child cruelty is a very bad thing, and yet there are adverts on our TVs every day saying don't smack children. Never an excuse to smack a child. That's just telling us the blatantly obvious, isn't it? I think they should have to take a little bit of the money they spend on those adverts telling us not to smack our children and spend a bit on an advert aimed specifically at children. Simply saying, behave. <laughs> Let's face it, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> no one's putting out cigarettes on children that are just quietly colouring in in the corner, are they? <laughs> those drink driving ads are horrific, aren't they? They're like 30 second horror films. My favourite. <laughs> it was two or three years ago, and it, was, it panned down a hospital corridor to find this man sitting in a hospital bed being fed mushy food by a nurse. And the voiceover simply said, this is a drunk driver. And you find yourself thinking, well, it'd be something of a liability behind the wheel sober. <laughs> Has anyone here ever driven drunk? Has anyone? By show of hands, anyone? You, you have. Well, I... I admire your honesty. You know, I hope nothing bad happened when you did that. And let's face it, there were mitigating circumstances when you drove drunk. You were pissed. <laughs> We've all done things we regret when we're pissed. Some of you may be with one of them this evening. <laughs> I hope nothing bad happened when, when you drove drunk. You know, I think if they made an advert about the normal experience, it would just be a bloke waking up the next day with an extra 20 quid in his wallet, because he didn't have to pay for a cat. <laughs> it would be shocking, but in a different way. I think the people that make the drink driving ads should be forced to make an advert aimed specifically at pedestrians. Simply saying, pedestrians. Watch where you're going, some of us have had a drink. <laughs> it costs £165,000 to raise a child to the age of 18 in the UK. That's why I've sponsored one in Africa. It's a pound a week. <laughs> One in four African children has a gun. Think about that. The other three are fucked. <laughs> I'll tell you what they need in sub-Saharan Africa. A little. <laughs> it's fucking cheap little. Who can't afford that? <coughs> Actually, the most callous thing I heard about famine in Africa was not from another comedian, you know, trying to make light of it, but it was from two ladies in their 50s in a doctor's surgery in North London. And one of them was looking at the headlines in the paper, and it was all about the famine, and she just put down the paper and said rhetorically, this famine, it's terrible, isn't it? And her friend, without skipping a beat, went, yeah, but they don't get our winters. <laughs> I thought, fuck, you know, that is harsh. <laughs> and then I'm ashamed to say a small part of me went, it does always look nice. <laughs> of course, the big campaign the last couple of years was stop third world debt. What I can't understand is how they're getting into debt in the first place. <laughs> There's no fucking shops. <laughs> what idiot Saturday boy is giving a Kalahari Bushman interest-free credit on a stereo? <laughs> I still can't understand how the third world hasn't consolidated their debts into one easy monthly payment. <laughs> Surely that's the way forward. They should get in touch with the good people of Ocean Finance. <laughs> Have you seen those commercials? They're incredible. They take 15 of the ugliest people you've ever seen. And they all say exactly the same thing down the lens, as if it's taking every ounce of their wit to get this simple sentence out. They all say, they made it so easy. They made it so easy. And you're looking at it thinking, well, they kind of fucking had to. <laughs> if they'd made it complicated, you wouldn't have understood. And if it had been difficult, it would have been a bit like work. And you don't like that, do you? That's how you got into this mess. <laughs> My favourite thing about natural disasters, and I know it's wrong to have a list. <laughs> Certainly getting it laminated was a mistake, but my... <laughs> My favourite thing about natural disasters is the fact they call them acts of God, and then two days later they have a day of prayer. So they have a day of prayer for an act of God. 
What I want to know is how does that prayer go? Dear Lord, what the fucking hell was that all about? <laughs> Half the people that have ever smoked have now stopped. Which sounds good, but when I say stopped, a lot of them are dead. <laughs> I just think there's nicer ways of saying things, aren't there? Like saying, I've got a lot of nieces and nephews is a nice way to say my sister is a slut. <laughs> she favours the flatter shoe is a nice way to say lesbian. <laughs> Surprise sex is a lovely term for rape. <laughs> Scared of the dark is a nice way to say horrible racist. I'm thinking of launching a fragrance is a nice way to say, pull my finger. <laughs> when I was at school, a girl called Alice wanked off a dog for three cigarettes. I know what you're thinking, how did a dog get cigarettes? <laughs> I think British men have got a fairly terrible reputation in the bedroom. We're always saying the wrong thing. I remember once having a one-night stand with a girl and... After the sex, she turned to me and jokingly said, who's going to sleep in the wet patch? I said, you're optimistic, I'm not staying. <laughs> this is a good story about how bad British men are in the sack. I've got a friend. He went on holiday to Ibiza. He was about 25 at the time, and he picked up a girl, got her back to the villa. They made love underneath the moonlight on the veranda. Sounds fairly romantic, I think, as a setting. But he managed to fuck it up. Don't worry about that. <laughs> she turned to him. She said, talk dirty to me. More accurately, talk dirty to me. <laughs> he had a couple of seconds to think. Okay, gentlemen, you've all got a couple of seconds. Just go to the place in your head, the little roller decks of dirt, <laughs> next to the wank bank, generally. <laughs> you, you know, you've got something smarter you could get out pretty quickly. You've all got something, right? He had a few seconds to think. He came up with the following Have some of that, you fat slag. <laughs> You fat slag. <laughs> Fucking hell. I imagine pretty quickly followed by, why are you crying? <laughs> In terms of romance, it's right out there with, well, it won't suck itself. <laughs> I'm not saying that women aren't as bad. Women can be as bad. I once, I once had sex with an Australian girl. She said mid-coitus, whilst fucking. <laughs> she said, have you slimed yet? slimed yet. <laughs> I thought it was not fucking Ghostbusters. <laughs> I fantasise about having sex with the gymnast. Not just because they're really bendy and flexible and you could do loads of extraordinary positions, but also because I imagine they do a brilliant dismount. <laughs> they end up by the side of the bed like that. And if they bend their knees, even just a little bit, you can make them do it again. 80% <laughs> of personal ads say good sense of humour required. And the reason 80% of personal ads say good sense of humour required is because everything else in the personal ad is a lie. <laughs> you turn up on the blind date, she says, I know I said I was petite and pretty, <laughs> but you've got to laugh. <laughs> You think, yeah, I notice it also says you enjoy long walks, which is handy because you can fuck right off. <laughs> There's quite a lot of couples in. I can see lots of couples around the place. Have you all had the sexual history conversation? Not all of you, clearly. <laughs> the sexual history conversation happens about three, four, five months into a relationship, and the, the woman says to the man, I'd like to know about your sexual history. And the man thinks, well, no, you fucking wouldn't. <laughs> but the woman doesn't just ask once. She keeps on asking until she gets a result. Yeah? I had this recently. I was cornered. I had to have the sexual history conversation. I had to list every woman I'd ever been with, from the girl I lost my virginity to, right the way up to her. And that is where I should have stopped. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the Spider-Man, yes? <laughs> the sexual practice. Don't panic, I'll explain. The Spider-Man is a sexual practice whereby you're making love to a woman from behind. That's key to this operation. You're just about to arrive. You've got your happy face on. You look like a turtle shitting. 
you pull out to catch Spider-Man. <laughs> I realise many of you are looking at me thinking, well, why did he tell us that? That sounds horrible. <laughs> sounds very aggressive, not very romantic and loving, but the reason I'm telling you is because men are such bad communicators, especially at times of high emotion, like a breakup. So, gentlemen, I don't think you ever need to have that awkward it's not me, it's you conversation again. I think next time, when you think the relationship has run its course, simply Spider-Man. <laughs> she will either think, that was brilliant. <laughs> In which case, she's a keeper. Or... <laughs> this is over, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'll be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, good night. Thank you. An encore. What jokes do you want to hear again? <laughs> I'll tell you what you can do. If you've been in a relationship a couple of years and the sex is still fantastic, but it's got a bit routine, you know, you, you do the same things in the same order on the same night of the week or whatever. It's got a bit kind of predictable, your sex life. What you can do is the next time you're getting sucked off, pull out, come in Ryan, and then kick her in the shin. <laughs> it's called the pirate. I saw a homeless guy getting off the bus. I thought, how does he know it's his stop? <laughs> There's a guy near me who sells the big issue who always goes, it's my last one, come on, if you buy this, I can go home. <laughs> You've not got the point of this at all. <laughs> I'm not in favour of ID cards for the very simple reason I don't know how we're going to pick them up at the post office. Hello, I've come for my ID card. Have you got any ID? I was in the airport. Those treadmills they've got are huge. <laughs> They're much better than the ones in the supermarket. I get very self-conscious. <laughs> I got talking the other day about professional wrestling, and we were talking about the item of clothing they wear in professional wrestling, which is an all-in-one leotard called a unitard. I thought, unitard? That sounds like a special needs kid with a horn. <laughs> Unitard. <laughs> Potentially very dangerous, because they're always trying to come in for a hug. They might take your eye out. <laughs> well, that's almost the end of the show. I, I had a girl come up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago. At the stage door, she waited for me. She looked me boldly in the eyes and said, I'm not wearing any panties. I thought, all right, forgetful. <laughs> I haven't washed me cock. What a pair. <laughs> I was walking between the stage door and the car, this is about six months ago, and there was a girl, as I was walking, I, I saw her, between two cars, pissing. <laughs> I, I double took. On the second take, I made eye contact. <laughs> which is awkward. <laughs> and she said, mid-flow, can I have an autograph? <laughs> I thought, if you've got any paper, you need it. <laughs> and then do you know what I did? I waited. <laughs> Enjoy the show? Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a shake? Nice. Oh. It's not the worst thing that's happened after a gig. I had a guy come up to me. This was in Edinburgh. And he was, he was miles away. He was about, like, 100 metres away. And I just heard this voice, thick Scottish accent, saying, Send my penis! <laughs> and I thought, that's weird. It sounds like that bloke said, Sign my penis. <laughs> Freaky. And then, as he got closer, it transpired that not only was he saying, Sane my penis. <laughs> he had the little fella out. <laughs> what do you say? I said I could initial it for you. <laughs> One of my favourite things to do on a busy Saturday afternoon, yeah, is, you know the animal rights people you get in the middle of town? They've got a trestle table out, just sort of outside the shops, and they've got quite grisly posters up. 
of animals in distress. If you're an animal lover, it is heartbreaking to see. And they've got the leaflets and the petitions that you can sign. And they've got four main posters wherever you go in the country. There's, there's an emaciated dog in a tiny cage, a, a cat that's been shaved with wires coming out of it, a monkey missing the top of its head. And you can tell it's still alive from its eyes, but obviously in horrible pain. And a rabbit with stuff being poured in its eyes to test whether it's safe for us, I'm guessing. Well, what I like to do if I'm bored on a Saturday afternoon, I walk up to that table and go, I'll have the one of the monkey, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, but... Last joke. Surely the best thing about getting a face transplant... It's a good setup, isn't it? <laughs> it's exciting. What comes next? Punchline. <laughs> Surely the best thing about getting a face transplant would be turning up at the donor's funeral and going, whoa. <laughs> Well, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you so much for coming out this evening and, and sharing your, your evening with me. I, I really do appreciate it, and it's my favourite thing about what I do. I, I love playing live and uh, doing gigs around the country, and it's, it's an honour and a privilege. And I, I realise that, even in saying that, I sound a bit middle-class and insincere. I, I realise when I say you've been a great audience, thank you so much for coming out, it sounds like... But uh, genuinely, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, it's a privilege, it's my favourite thing about my, my job and uh, it's such an important part of my life, I absolutely love it. So let me try and put that in a way that cuts through the showbiz bullshit. Thank you very much indeed for all the money. <laughs> Happy Jimmy Carr, thank you very much indeed. Cheers, good Any other last problems? Anyone else got anything going on? My dog just died. Your dog just died? Hmm. And what's, what's... Well, that's very sad, sir. What, what's... Specifically, what's the problem? Do you not live near a canal, or...? <laughs> Do you suspect your Korean neighbours? <laughs> what, what did he die of? Do you mind me asking? Uh, cancer. Cancer. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, we've already got a dead animal. <laughs> And now we've parlayed cancer into this, so this is comedy fucking gold. <laughs> I mean, I can't see this not making the final cut on the DVD, sir. So I, <laughs> I cannot see a world where a dog dying of cancer. Because if there's one thing I know about the British public, it's cancer dead dog jokes, they fucking love them. <laughs> Thanks for your help. It didn't get cancer from a paedophile by any fucking chance, did it? <laughs> Has anyone got a slightly less depressing problem? <laughs>